What's up, everybody? I mean, WhatsApp has been in the news a lot lately, thanks to the changes for their privacy policy to send more data to Facebook. And thanks to this, maybe you're wondering if you should ditch WhatsApp, and maybe you want some alternatives for options to switch to. And if you're looking for that sort of stuff, then you found the right video. So let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Michael Tunnell with the Destination Linux Network. And if you're new to the channel, I make tech videos with a focus on free and open source software, Linux-based operating systems, and just all around tech that I think is cool. So if that's something that interests you, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified for the next video. All right, first, I'm gonna do a quick rundown of what has happened to WhatsApp's privacy policy, and then you can decide whether or not it makes sense to you to consider an alternative. So what's happened? Well, WhatsApp sent notifications to its users about a change in their privacy policy, which will let it send data to Facebook. They also made it so that you have to agree to it. It's a mandatory acceptance. So you either accept it or you stop using WhatsApp. So what kind of data will be sent to Facebook? And does this mean that Facebook can read WhatsApp messages? No, this does not mean that you could, they can read the messages. This does not change the encryption of conversations with your friends or your family. Conversations in WhatsApp are encrypted end-to-end, -end, which means that not even WhatsApp itself can access them. However, by using WhatsApp, you may be sharing with it some usage data, such as your phone's unique identifier and other metadata. These may be linked to your identity, in fact, and it's this data that the privacy policy stipulates that you now must agree that can, it can be shared with Facebook. Here's an excerpt from the new privacy policy about this. It states, we collect device and con connection specific information when you install, access, or use our services. This includes information such as hardware model, operating system information, battery level, signal strength, app version, browser information, mobile network, connection information, including phone number, mobile operator, or ISP, language and time zone, IP address, device operations information, and identifiers, including identifiers unique to Facebook company products associated with the same device or account. So there's a few things in that privacy policy that are a bit sketchy, and if that means you want to consider an alternative, then here are five options that I have for you for alternatives to WhatsApp. Now, these are in no particular order, so you can just decide whichever one fits best for you, and there you go. I will give you my opinion towards the end of the video, but right now I'm just gonna give you the pros and cons of each of the five alternatives. Up first in the list, we're gonna talk about Signal. Signal is a great blend of open source, privacy, and reasonable amount of convenience. It's improved a lot over the years that I've been using it, and it is a great alternative to WhatsApp. Signal has support for a lot of great features too, including the very important feature of end-to-end -end encryption. In addition, it also has other features, such as support for emojis and support for stickers. It also lets you create and manage groups, and it also has video calling and voice calling. It has another piece that's a really cool feature called disappearing messages. It's kind of like a self-destruct mode, so after a certain amount of time, the messages will automatically delete, which is pretty cool. It also has support for cross-platform applications, so it works with your mobile apps. It also works with desktop apps, which is really nice, and those, those uh, messages will be synced together. It also is 100% open source, like I mentioned previously, which is a very important factor, in my opinion, for privacy and security applications. Now, I think Signal is one of the best alternatives to WhatsApp by far. That's not to say, though, that it doesn't have drawbacks. It does. It has a couple of cons that you should be aware of. Signal collects almost no data from you, but I say almost because it does need your phone number to function. It also uses this data to inform people that have your phone number in their contacts to be able to notify them that you are on Signal as well. If you're switching from WhatsApp to Signal, though, it's probably not that big of an issue because WhatsApp also uses your phone number to identify you 
on the system and also to connect with you with other people who are using WhatsApp. But this structure limits the value of the application when it comes to privacy because people who want as much privacy as possible, well, they don't want to share their phone number, especially since if you want to do it in a more uh, a larger scale rather than just friends and family, having your phone number attached to the conversations is not ideal in regards to privacy. So there are other alternatives that do better at this particular factor, but Signal is still a great option overall if you want to have just friends and family conversations such as you, know, you might do with WhatsApp. The other con I wanted to tell you about is that it doesn't store your data in the cloud. And I know you're thinking maybe that, you know, that's not a bad thing. Well, it's not, but this, what, it, what it means is that it's going to be requiring local backups. So if you want to have a copy of your conversations via a backup, then you'll need to do that manually. Now, for me, the local backup thing isn't really an issue. The phone number thing is kind of an issue for me, but to use it on like a big scale. But Signal is a very strong contender overall for replacing WhatsApp for most people. I think that Signal is a great option. And if you're interested in checking it out, I'll have a link in the description below. Up next is Element. Element is another fantastic WhatsApp alternative. It has privacy built into it from day one, from by design, and that means it has end-to-end -end encryption, which is a very, very important feature like I mentioned earlier. I didn't necessarily say why it's important, but the reason it's important is that end-to-end -end encryption is what is included in WhatsApp. So if you're gonna be leaving WhatsApp, you're gonna wanna have a similar feature available to you because if you care about privacy, then end-to-end -end encryption messages is important. So let's talk about the other features that Element has. For example, it does not require a phone number. You don't have to give it a phone number in order to use Element, which is a, a, a reason why it's a better option in terms of privacy than Signal, but there are other things that it does as well. Uh, it supports creating large public groups and closed groups. It has the decentralized matrix network as a part of this application. It has video calls, voice calls, that sort of stuff. It does have uh, cross-platform support with mobile apps and desktop apps. And of course, it is open source. So this is an application that is a fantastic alternative, but there are some cons. First of all, the con that I think is the most important to mention is that it is a little bit confusing with the encryption. It's not difficult or anything like that, but out of the box when you first start using it, it might be a little confusing because you'll have encryption keys on the first device that will be generated and you will need to sync the sessions between the different devices. Now it's not difficult to do, you just add your account to that device, it will activate a thing to uh, verify the session and you go to the other device in order to connect those together. And what's really cool about this is that it allows you to pass keys back and forth to be able to have access to the data, which is stored in the cloud, so you don't have to make copies. You just have to make sure that your sessions are verified to each other, which kind of can be a little bit uh, cumbersome to beginner users and that sort of stuff, but it is a really cool feature at the same time. So it is a pro and a con in the way it works. But... The process of doing it is actually fairly simple because once you start the you start activating the uh, session verification, you just compare the emojis that are on both of the devices, and if they match, then that means your encryption is good to go. And then you just verify that it's complete, and then you're 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 done. So it's a pro overall, but it's a little bit of a con because it's it's quite different in how it works, so it might be confusing to some people. So the next con to tell you about is kind of the same situation where it's a pro and a con, and that is the decentralized matrix network. Now, this is a really, really cool thing because it has a lot of benefits in the fact that if, some, if one of the servers or instances goes down, you can easily connect to another one and still keep the conversation going and that sort of stuff. It's, it's cool, but the process of doing those things is a little bit convoluted sometimes because for example if you want to have a conversation with someone on a different instance then you have to know what instance they are on and if if you want to go into a particular room of an instance and you search for explore rooms 
Well, if it's not on the same instance as you are on, then you, by default you won't see it. You'll have to specify what server or do all servers that are publicly accessible, and then there you can find the room. So there's a little bit of things like that for different nuances that makes it a little bit of a con in terms of using the matrix network. But at the same time, the matrix network is fantastic, so it's a pro and a con just like the encryption piece. I think Element is a fantastic solution for an alternative to WhatsApp. It has all of the encryption value and it has a bunch of other great features including cross-platform and all that stuff that I mentioned. It also has like the basic support for uh, emojis and stickers and link previews and that sort of stuff. But what's really interesting is that I think that it's something to consider because it's not in addition to being a solution to WhatsApp, it also is a solution to other things at the same time, which I think is pretty unique for this kind of application. So this unique feature is the ability to be a competitor to other applications. So in addition to being a competitor to WhatsApp, it's also a competitor to Slack or uh, Microsoft Teams and that sort of stuff. So you can have one application that does your private messaging, your group public chat room type of stuff, and also your business internal communications all in one. So if Element sounds like a good option to you, then I will have a link for it in the description below. The next option on the list is Telegram. Telegram is an interesting and somewhat problematic option in this particular case because while it does have a lot of the same features of WhatsApp, it's not a really good alternative to WhatsApp. So let's talk about that. So Telegram is being promoted as an alternative to WhatsApp thanks to all this uh, privacy policy issues with WhatsApp, but it's not really because Telegram doesn't really have end-to-end -end encryption. Now, technically, it is possible with these secret chats, but those secret chats are super limited and they're not on by default. So if you have a conversation with anyone just in general, well, those are not encrypted. Those are completely open, basically plain text stuff that anyone who works for Telegram could read those messages in theory. So it's not really end-to-end -end encryption in the same way that WhatsApp, where all messages in WhatsApp are end-to-end -end encrypted, and Telegram is basically none of them except for a few depending on if you activate them. And you have to manually activate the secret chats every time you want to use encryption. And well, that's not an ideal solution. Another thing about it is that it is cloud-based, which is good and bad at the same time because with Element, the cloud-based stuff is great because it has encryption. But since Telegram doesn't really have encryption for the most part, the cloud-based stuff isn't that good because it means that all of your data and all the messages you ever send on Telegram are available to be read on the Telegram's cloud. So, you know, that's not a good option in this case. And also, it does have other things that are not necessarily great about it in the fact that it technically is open source only on the client side. The server side is proprietary, a.k.a. closed source, so you don't know what they're doing with your data or how they handle it in any way whatsoever. They could be scanning it every single time you send a message to it. We don't know. Now, I'm not saying they are. I just We just don't know. With all that said, it does have a lot of cool features similar to WhatsApp. It has video calls and voice calls. It has support for emojis and stickers and all that. You can create groups and manage groups. You can even create channels which allow you to kind of do like public messages to anyone who can who wants to subscribe to them and that sort of stuff. So it's interesting because Telegram has a lot of cool features and it is being, you know, touted as being like open source and encrypted and all this other stuff, but it's only half open source and it's only partly encrypted and you know it does have a lot of cool features but at the same time are those features good enough to well not want encryption up next in the list is a interesting application called session so session is a fork of signal but it goes one step further and doesn't require phone numbers so it's even more privacy focused than Signal is in that particular sense. 
So in order to not use a phone number, what it does is that you create a session ID that you share with your contacts and ask your contacts to share theirs and that sort of stuff. So it, it's an interesting th solution rather than using a phone number. So you basically just get an ID from the session application and that way you can share that with whoever you want. And since Session is a fork of Signal, it has a lot of the features that Signal has. And if, of course, the very important end-to-end -end encryption thing. And another feature that Session has that's really interesting is that it is based on a different structure because it uses blockchain technology to facilitate the sending and receiving of these messages. Using blockchain is really interesting because it's really good for reliability because if you put it on the blockchain, anybody a part of the blockchain could actually send those messages to you. So technically speaking, that's a pretty cool thing. And because it's encrypted, it being on the blockchain is not really an issue at all. And But there are some kind of some negatives to using the blockchain technology, and that is that some people have reported that there are significant delays with sending and receiving messages on session. In addition to the blockchain technology, it also has a lot of cool features like voice messages being sent back and forth. You can create and manage uh, open and closed groups, open groups being like public chat rooms and closed groups being like private groups and private sessions and that sort of stuff. It also has support for uh, cross-platform applications like uh, desktop apps and mobile apps. And of course, since it is fork of Signal, it is open source software. Now, I haven't had a lot of experience with Session yet to give you a yes or no recommendation type of thing, but I do think it's a really interesting application, and I do think the blockchain technology usage is really cool, and I really like the fact that it doesn't require a phone number and it uses a Session ID instead. I think that is very nice. It's one of the things that I don't like about Signal is that it requires your phone number, so I do like the fact that Session does that. I think there's a lot of... Uh, potential for this particular application alternative and if you'd like to learn more about it I'll have a link to the session app in the description below. And the last alternative I have for you is Threema. Threema is a really interesting application for a variety of reasons. It has the very important end-to-end -end encryption, of course. It does not require a phone number to use it. It lets you create and manage groups. It has the ability to add polls. It has voice calls and video calls and a bunch of other stuff. And it, while it does have cross-platform support, it doesn't have native applications. It uses a web app. So you have mobile apps and a web app. So you still can do cross-platform. So that is really nice to have. It's a really interesting thing, and it's really high in the list of possible solutions for WhatsApp alternatives, but there is a little bit of an issue. And that issue is that Threema is a premium application. It is a paid app. So in order to use this with your friends and family, everyone would have to buy this application. And that's not necessarily a big deal because it's pretty cheap, but at the same time, Convincing people to switch to a different platform is already difficult. Convincing people to switch to a new platform that also costs money might be a little bit harder. I think Threema has a lot of great potential to be an alternative to WhatsApp. It has a ton of features. I mean, it is just stacked with features. It is a pretty cool application, but again, that paid part of it, that premium price thing, it's it might deter some people. So. Uh, if your friends, family, and other contacts don't mind paying for a great alternative to WhatsApp, then you could easily uh, recommend Threema to them. I think that Threema is, has a lot of potential. It looks really slick. It is open source, and just that, that paid part might deter some people. So, you know, if they don't mind that, then Th Threema is definitely something worth checking out. So there's five alternatives for WhatsApp for you to check out. And I think that you should definitely give a shot to four of those five. Uh, I personally use Signal and Element all the time. I think both of those are great options. I haven't had enough time for Session yet, but I am looking forward to trying that out more. And Threema looks really interesting. If I can convince some people to try it with me, we'll see what, what happens uh, with that. But I think that all four of those options have a lot of potential as an alternative to WhatsApp. So there you go. So what do you think of my list of alternatives to WhatsApp? What do you think is the best alternative to WhatsApp? And did I not include something you think I should have? Let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are on this subject. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I make new content for the channel. 
Also, if you want some more content from me, then check out the Destination Linux Network because there's a lot of great stuff. I have some podcasts that are on that network, so go to destinationlinux.network to check that out. There's also a bunch of other great content there, so I think you'll definitely want to check it out if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. I'm Michael Tunnell with the Destination Linux Network, and remember, always try to keep an open mind and always try to use open source. I'll see you next time.